in from the Chinese side to northeastern North Korea, and they nailed him, I think. It's believed because he had some religious material in his computer, and he was spreading the uh, doctrine, the word of God, or trying to spread the word of God among North Koreans. Of course, the word of God is sacrilege in North Korea. The only um, gods they worship are the uh, Kim Dynasty, the current leader, Kim Jong-un. People have been executed and in prison for worshiping uh, Christianity secretly. So, Don, I know you've got a couple of other theories about what could have happened with, with Merrill and the North Koreans. What other possibilities are there? Well, my, my theory is totally off the top of my head. I've been to North Korea a number of times, as you point out, and we've always been warned, don't take any towels or don't take any uh, pictures that you might see on the wall. Don't take or sheets or blankets. We, you know, some people might be tempted to pack some of that stuff away. People would like to have those things as souvenirs. So maybe uh, it's, it's conceivable that a visitor could have taken them and they could have noticed that stuff was missing and rushed onto the plane to get it. That's one theory. The other theory is, I kind of joked uh, on occasion, what if uh, you're leaving North Korea, uh, you get the idea of writing a great farewell insult to the regime, you know, scrolling on the wall or on the mirror, would they yank you off the plane? Well, if they found out about it, that they, if they happened to see it before your plane took off, they might. So I have those two theories about why they'd rush into a plane and yank somebody off. But that's not to say that uh, this gentleman was at all uh, involved in any such uh, uh, silly activity. Don Kirk with the Christian Science Monitor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>
support for PRI's The World comes from Medtronic, supporting the American Diabetes Association in their effort to prevent and cure diabetes and to improve the lives of all people affected by diabetes. You can test your risk for diabetes at StopDiabetesNow.com. I'm Marco Werman, and this is Don't the like what you're doing, of the BBC World Service, PRI, and WGB in Boston. Most everyone around in 1963 has a story of where they were on November 22nd. Don't know what the hell you're doing. In Texas, a few hundred Mexican-Americans recall where they were on November 21st. They were in Houston. They were among the last people to meet with the president the night before he was killed. The world's Jason Margolis has our story. Back in 1963, a group of Mexican-Americans in Texas had a crazy idea. Let's invite the president of the United States to meet with us. Some said, maybe he'll come. After all, he knows us. In 1960, Latinos formed Viva Kennedy Clubs, and their support in Texas helped Kennedy narrowly carry the state to the presidential election that year. Three years later, and to the surprise of Frank Ortiaga, the president said yes. Glad I don't have to go any further. It's going on here with you. This fucking freeway system's designed so goddamn horribly. Fuck you, Skiff. Fuck you.